Yukon Striker is the new for 2019 B&M Dive Coaster at Canada's Wonderland, and it is the tallest and fastest dive coaster in the world. One of the common complaints with B&M Dive Coasters are that they're one-trick ponies. They have too short of a layout, that kind of thing. And what Yukon does is pack in a lot right after that drop. There are four inversions on this roller coaster, two Immelmans, a vertical loop, and a zero-g roll. This is the only B&M Dive Coaster to feature a vertical loop, so that itself is pretty neat. But this coaster also has a couple cool things up its sleeve. So I'm going to get into all of that in this full in-depth review. I'm going to talk about my experience so that you can know what to expect if you get the opportunity to go up to Canada and try this ride out. Now the first thing I want to talk about is my first impression of this coaster. Because the first time that you'll see this ride is as you are driving up to the park. This ride fits beautifully in the park skyline. One of the things I love is looking out, seeing all the coasters towering above, and seeing just how cool it looks. And Yukon striker really fills in a gap that was left especially after their stand-up coaster is removed but for a while there wasn't a ride here at all so finally we got this huge towering ride one of the largest in the park they now have three B&M coasters and this one is gonna be drastically different from the other two Leviathan and Behemoth so I really do like how the ride looks in the skyline and as you approach it that entire area is a complete 180 from what it used to be that section of the park was very forgettable. It wasn't an area you wanted to be in. There was just nothing there. So now you got Frontier Canada. This is the headlining attraction, and they've done a nice job to really make that area look good, and that includes theming the ride. You will see some very loose theming to mining. They've added some nice decorations surrounding the coaster. The station looks good. I'd say it's pretty average theming-wise for a Cedar Fair roller coaster. It's about what I expected. Now, as you go to ride this, one of the things to know is that they actually have four different lines for this ride. It is really crazy. So you have a line for the front row, a line for the second and third row, a line for priority boarding, and a single rider line. So I thought that was really interesting how many different options they have depending on what your circumstance is when you want to go and ride this thing. I personally made sure to take good advantage of that single rider line. That way every single seat is filled on the coaster and you'll probably wait less time there than you would the standby line. The downside is, is that you don't exactly have too much of a choice of where you'll be sitting, but I did manage to get four rides in on this, two of which were in the front row and two of which were in the back. And I know front row has always been the fan favorite for dive coasters, and for a good reason too, I mean, looking over that drop, there's just nothing else like it. But that back row is kind of nice because you really get yanked over after it holds you there. And I know I've mentioned this in other dive coaster reviews, but because there are only three rows on this coaster, you aren't going to see a drastic difference in ride experience between the three. What you will see a difference in though is what side you're sitting on. Are you going to be on the far right? Are you going to be in the center? Are you going to be on the far left? And I think that this is one of those coasters that it is cool if you can ride on one of the far sides because then you have nothing above you and nothing below you. And it means now there's a near miss effect with the tunnel because Yukon Striker drops underwater into a tunnel through Vortex's helix. And that tunnel looks pretty small when you're up at the top. You're like, is this thing even going to make it through? So if you're on that edge, it adds a really neat effect to the ride. Last thing I'll talk about before I get into the ride experience is one of the things that is getting talked about the most with this coaster, and that is the loose article system. They have moving bins like you would see at a dry cleaner. And what's really neat about this is that the bins are in sync with the ride. So let's say that the ride goes down or it like stops on the mid-course brake run or something. The bins won't just keep moving. It is locked onto that train that you are on. So when you get off, your bag will be waiting for you. You put all your stuff in on one side and then you retrieve it on the other. And it passes over top of the train. One thing you need to be aware with this system is that you cannot have any drink with you bringing this in because the bins have to go up and over the train which means it is on a slant so if you have a drink it would spill and soak everything. So they are making sure that if you have a drink bottle it is empty. So that is something to be aware of. Now let's get into that ride experience. So you board your train, you pull down your vest restraint, and you make a right turn into the lift hill. You're going to ascend up 223 feet in the air. This is a fairly steep lift hill. Dive coaster lift hills have always been like that. You get this fantastic view all the way at the top. You see all of Vaughn, it's super pretty, and then the drop is facing Wonder Mountain. So that's also really cool. You get a really nice view up there. 
you pull up to the edge and a chain hangs you over the top. And I would say that this coaster hangs you up there longer than most. It felt like you were up there for a while. Some coasters hold you over for five seconds, others hold you over for three. It felt like this one was maybe like seven seconds, which I thought was crazy. But with these vests, you're gonna see something slightly different than the ones on Val Raven. Val Ravens are completely tight on you the entire time. These, if you're in the front row looking over that drop, it's gonna have some give to it, so your body almost starts moving forward as you're hanging over. On the downside though, it is still not as free as your standard over the shoulder restraints that you'll see on most other B&M coasters. So as a result, the airtime is still not as good as the airtime you'd get on rides like Griffin or Shikra. The only way that you can really get that airtime is if you physically use your hands and pull the vest away from you so that way it's not tight on your body and then that way you will get some floating air as you go over that drop which i will say that drop is huge 245 feet the drop is bigger than the height because you go underwater like i mentioned through vortex's helix that part is so cool i really do like that it is easily the best tunnel i have seen on a dive coaster your first big element is going to be this massive element. This is a very graceful element. You have so much speed coming out of this thing, 81 miles per hour. You shoot up all the way up there and twist out. And all of the elements I would say on here are going to be graceful. They aren't going to be whippy like some of those B&M inverts. Everything on here is going to be slowly transitioning you from one element to another. The elements on this ride are not really compact. So if you're a fan of those compact roller coasters, this is not one of them. And I would say part of the main reason for that is because you're just going so fast on this ride. You really are flying. That next element is a zero G roll. It's solid. It's definitely not the best zero G roll out there. And I think if it didn't have the vest, it might be a little bit better. So that wasn't my favorite element or anything, but it is nice to see it on a ride like this because that is not a typical element on a dive coaster. So that was good. And if you want something that you'll never see on any other dive coaster, your next element is a vertical loop. And I was not so sure about this when this animation came out. I was like, okay, why is this here? Is this going to be a good idea? How's this going to feel? And I think it's a fine addition to the ride. I can understand why they put it in there. The plot of land that this coaster sits on, it would have been hard to incorporate another element that was big and drawn out a vertical loop you can do in a pretty small amount of space because it's all upwards and not out if that makes sense so in that way I think the vertical loop is fine I wouldn't really change that or the next element which is another smaller Immelman and there is actually a mini tunnel in between that vertical loop and Immelman and after that you hit the mid course and really any complaints that I would have with Yukon striker would be after the mid course that mid course hits pretty hard. You pretty much come to a full stop and then you slowly drop into a mini dive and that doesn't really do anything for the ride in my opinion. It's okay. You don't get any air time on it. It's not very big. The main point is to just build up more momentum, which in my opinion wasn't really necessary if they just didn't have the mid course. But my guess would be that they decided to keep the mid course so that they could have three trains on this ride and include another dive. That is something that a lot of dive coasters do is that they have two dives. And I don't know, this one just didn't do anything for me. After that, you have an airtime hill. Doesn't really give you much airtime again because of the vests. The vests are better than Val Ravens, don't get me wrong. I do like that hanging that you get over the first drop, but it's still not as open or freeing. And after that, you have a helix. And really, in my opinion, the best part about this is that it's a spectacle. If you're standing on the ground, you can stand directly underneath that helix and just watch the ride swirl around you. It's pretty neat. And then after that, you have the brake run. After that mid-course brake run, the ride doesn't really do a whole lot. It doesn't feel super complete. The majority of this ride is before that mid-course, and that is what I think has all of the best parts of it. So in my opinion, what did I think of Yukon Striker? It's fine. I wasn't wowed by it. No part of Yukon Striker left me going, wow, that was incredible. And I think part of the reason is because dive coasters have never been a favorite of mine. I think the general public will really enjoy this roller coaster because it has that scare factor that drop is going to intimidate a lot of people and i think this ride is a solid fit at wonderland like i said it fits great in the skyline this section of the park looks really good and i do think that this ride is a step up from val raven but that's coming from a guy who doesn't really like val raven so you might be wondering then where do i rank this with the other dive coasters in terms of layout i think it has a better layout than griffin or shikra it's better themed than griffin or shikra but i think that the other two have the better restraint and so therefore i think that i would take both of those coasters over this one but that doesn't mean that i drastically love one more than the other they're all pretty similar we're only talking 
talking minor differences here between the four that exist in North America. So that's why I say I think I would take the other two over this. But as I mentioned, dive coasters were just not my thing. I'm not saying it's a bad ride. I think that a certain type of audience that this coaster appeals to will really enjoy it. It's just not my favorite. So for Yukon Strikers final score, I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. That doesn't mean it's bad or anything. Any score over a 5 is good. If it's below a 5, it's a bad ride. I don't think Yukon Strikers is a bad ride. The rides that I give 8s, 9s, and 10s to are the ones that I really enjoy and I want to get back in line and do over and over again. This is a coaster that I do and I'm like, okay, yeah, that was solid. All right, what's next? As I mentioned, I don't expect you to agree with me. Everyone has different tastes and opinions. All I ask is that you respect mine. And if you really like this coaster, that's great. It just so happens that there's a lot of different other roller coaster types out there that I would much rather do than a dive coaster. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed this review. Of course, if you're new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button. You can check out other coaster reviews I have done here at Coaster Studios. They're all available in a playlist organized in alphabetic order by the coaster's name, so you can check that out. And of course, I have a lot more coming, so you have that to look forward to. Thank you guys for tuning in today, and I'll see you in the next one.